Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. Here's what we have in store for you for this Monday, November 25th, 2013 edition. Tonight, a false flag exposed. The French government's plot to kill a Muslim hate preacher with ties to British MI5 and blame it on neo-Nazis. And after what we've just seen of the federalized police attack squads, do we want Homeland arming them with military equipment from Iraq? All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. Our top story tonight, France planned false flag terror attack in Britain. Now, this is a story by Paul Joseph Watson. French intelligence services plan to stage a terror attack in Britain and then blame it on neo-Nazis in a bid to assassinate hate preacher Abu Hamza, according to an investigation by pressure group Hope Not Hate. The plan to kill the infamous hook-handed hate preacher Abu Hamza was the result of growing frustration by the French security services over the inaction of British authorities in the face of the growing threat of Islamic terrorists. Specifically, the French suspected Abu Hamza of having links to the terrorists responsible for the 1995 Paris Metro bombings. Now, the common question is, why would a country have a false flag? Why would they have this self-inflicted wound, whether it's the Gulf of Tonkin that affected us here in the States or the German Reichstag incident? You know, these things have various motivations, political, financial, you know, wars cost a whole lot of money, uh, uh, military engagements and so forth. There, there are various reasons. There's no one set deal, but I wouldn't put past any government or any administration to attempt to pull off a false flag. Now, something that concerns my privacy a great deal, we have this revealed, Northrop Grumman's unmarked gray helicopter drone. The image was sent to us, InfoWars, by someone high up within Northrop Grumman, who told us that the drone is small enough to be transported on the back of a large truck or towed on a trailer behind a pickup and can be fitted with all manner of surveillance technologies. The article goes on to talk about the MQ-8C Fire Scout which this is a smaller model of. And that particular drone is touted to have three times the payload capacity of the current military arsenals, and it's supposed to be the next generation of drones. So whether it's big things like this, the Predators, even the, some of the smaller things that you can get at your retail stores, I'm not a big fan of drones. Yes, they can be used for search and rescue. Search and rescue, not search and destroy. Also combating forest fires and things such as that. And, you know, the rationale is always, well, instead of, uh, you know, having some guys up in a helicopter looking for drug dealers and looking for patches of, you know, marijuana being grown, we can just fly these things around. I don't want you flying anything around looking for something without a warrant. It's just another extension, another thing to take away your personal privacies, just like the red light cameras and the toll cameras. I'm not a big fan of drones, but if the government has them, I think I should have the right to have one, too. Not that I'm saying I'd go out and buy one. Dallas Sheriff's Department lies about assault on peaceful protesters. But don't take my word for it. Definitely don't take the word of the Dallas Sheriff's Department. Watch this video and see it for yourself. They're here. Dun, dun, dun. Oh. Booing. What? Why are there more police? Are we evil? Or is it the joke about that guy's mustache? Time to leave. Go. Hey, man, what are you doing? Hey, they let us in here. Oh, so video take this. I'm a fall back. All right, so it looks like they're pulling the police out and pushing everybody back. They're getting pretty tough. All right, so it looks like they're pulling the police out and pushing everybody back. They're getting pretty tough. Really? Really, really? <laughs> For people who are, are listening to us live, they've now, they let him in, and now they've got the police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks. I'm being assaulted by police. Hey, you got to get off my court, man. North Korean thugs. These are people who don't believe in the First Amendment. You guys are engaging in tyranny. Absolute disgusting. Why did you guys let us in here to do that? They let them in the area, they told them they could come in, and now they're coming in like they're trespassers, punching and shoving people. Look, they're real. Look, they got a guy up against the fence. You guys. I right, we're live. You guys. I right, we're live in Dallas. We're going to get sued big time, you know that, right? Oh, listen. I want I want video of all these goons' faces. Look at those fat pigs. Oh. Look at that guy. 
I want the particular pounds, one. I want them five all. Five feet tall. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this. It's all on tape. You guys, you guys are unbelievable. Unbelievable. Unbelievable thugism. We are going back. I saw you guys punch that guy in the face for no reason. Unbelievable. This is the criminality, ladies and gentlemen, of the government. They are so angry that we came over there. They said they were supposed to let us in, and they let us in, and then they assaulted us without even asking us to leave. This is unbelievable, and I'm telling you, the, we have proven the tyranny now. We have absolutely proven. And in more police state news, we have this, spoils of war, police getting leftover Iraq trucks. Now, this is very troubling to me because you just saw how violent the sheriff's departments, police departments, uh, law enforcement can be. And we have these videos. This is stuff we shot around town, not even trying. I've shot this stuff. John Bounds shot, shot this stuff. You can see these guys just rolling around in these military-style vehicles, needing this to police a city in the United States of America. I don't know what they're planning, but they're saying that you can't have things to protect yourselves. You can't have guns. You can't have body armors. Meanwhile, they get to ride around and stuff like that. Banks warned Fed that they may have to start charging depositors. Executives at two of the top five U.S. banks set a cut to the 0.25% rate of interest on the $2.4 trillion in reserves they hold at the Fed would lead them to pass the cost on to depositors. Banks say they may have to charge because taking deposits is not free. They have to pay premiums on a few basis points to a U.S. government insurance program. Now, this concerns the interest on excess reserves, and you can see the charts and graphs right there. And you can also go to Infowars.com and Zero Hedge and view this for yourself. And basically what the banks are saying, hey, Fed, if you change the interest rates, we're going to have to start charging our depositors because you already have to charge to withdraw if you go to ATM and so forth. But we'll have to start charging people to deposit, and I'm sure the Fed isn't too concerned about that. They have QE unlimited. That's why stuff costs more and more and more. And, you know, I went to the store the other day and saw a $10 toothbrush. It wasn't even electric. And why is this? Because the dollar is inflated. It's worth less and less. That's why things, char uh, things cost more and more money. Now, we'll end our story tonight with this. Seattle store clerk to robbers. My gun is bigger. Robert Moore was ringing up a customer at his West Seattle Mini Mart last night when two men wearing ski masks entered the store. One pointing a gun at Moore. And one of them said, this is a robbery. It's what the store owner said next that saved him from an even more dangerous situation. And I looked at his gun and I said, I have a bigger one than you do. Moore turned to reach for his own gun and that's when the attempted robbers took off. And that's it for our news portion, but stay tuned because after this, we'll be talking to Darren McBreen and Kit Daniels, who were at the Dallas event, and talk about the police brutality firsthand. But also stop by PrisonPlanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. Now stay tuned after this for more special reports. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. 
Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics Advanced Media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. And welcome back. This is the special report segment of the InfoWars Nightly News, and we have this article on InfoWars.com today. High school student in critical condition after being tased by cops. Now, this is a report with contradictory eyewitness accounts. Some people are saying this is a condition where a young man was actively involved in a fistfight. Another say he was trying to break up a fistfight. Regardless, when police arrived on the scene, they tased the young man who hit to the floor, hit his head, and now has brain damage. His family is very much concerned that even if he lives through this ordeal, he will never be the same. Now, the side of the young man argues that he did nothing wrong. On the flip side, the sheriff's department had a similar sentiment, saying that their officer did nothing wrong. So we called the Bastrop Sheriff's Department earlier today, and this is what we were told. Hi, my name is Jakari Jackson. I'm a reporter for InfoWars.com. I just had a few questions about the situation at the Cedar Creek High School, uh, where okay. Mr. Day Riviere was tased. Um, first of all, Miss, can you tell me uh, the policy about using tasers on students? Is there a policy? There's not a policy specifically for students. We have a use of force policy, but it doesn't just generate um, scenarios for students only. Okay, uh, can we talk about the use of force? Uh, I know officers have many different uh, weapon types of weaponry. They have tasers, they have pepper spray, they have firearms. So what's the use of force to get to the point where they actually deploy a taser? I can actually just send you the policy if you'd like. Okay, sure, that'd be fine. Thank you, miss. So it's my understanding that the gentleman who was actually tased is going to have charges still pressed against him. Is that accurate? I know, sir. It's charges that are pending. Um, due to his condition, charges are unlikely um, going to be pressed against him, but um, there were a number of things, uh, violations that he did the day of the incident. Okay, and I'm, I know the, the case is still ongoing and all the facts have not come out, but uh, was, the, was it justified to use a taser in this situation? That'll come out in the investigation. Now, to her credit, the public information officer in Bastrop wasted no time getting us this information, so she is a person of her word. Let's go ahead and get a, a document cam on this. You can see it, the Bastrop County Sheriff's Office Policies and Procedures. And if you take a look down here, the policy. It is the policy of this office that officers shall use only that force that is necessary to effectively bring an incident under control while protecting the lives and safety of the officer or other person. So let's explore this a notion of other persons. Now there's a diagram right here. And when I first looked at this diagram, I, I wasn't exactly sure what to think because I was trying to find out, is there a hierarchy of force? You start here, then you move up, then you move up and you move up. But when you look at this, it seems anything that the officer could potentially do, uh, I guess is uh, acceptable in various circumstances. You know, like it says, you could assume that maybe it starts right here with the verbal commands, then moves to OC spray and then deadly force, but you can also go this way, verbal commands, impact weapons and electronic control devices. So I'm not exactly sure what to make of this diagram. I guess it just tells you the various forces they have available to them. But back down here, we'll skip down to this section where it says fight. It says passive resistance, and this is where the person just kind of jerks away from the officer, but you also have active resistance. The actor actively attacks officer through his own actions, aggressively resist arrest or movement. Now, thus far, nobody is saying that the man, uh, excuse me, the young man exactly attacked the officer. Like I said, reports are contradictory, but most people are saying that even if there, he was physically involved with, uh, in a fight, in a fighting situation, it wasn't directly involved with the officer. So we'll move on now 
flip a few pages here. Now I want to go to the Taser application, the electronic control device. It says the electronic control devices will not be fired at the throat, face, or eyes of an individual. The ECD may also be used in the stun mode. And it goes on to uh, say they have stricter policies for the people who work in jails. And we'll move on here. Now, the part on excessive force. In evaluating the reasonable application of force, officers must first consider their own age, size, strength, skill level with department-approved force options, state of health, and the number of officers as opposed to the number of actors. So I'm not exactly sure what the physicality was of the officer who actually deployed the taser. I don't know if he's some big, strong military kind of guy or, you know, some, some other type of individual. But, you know, my understandings, you know, from either side who gets the report, it seems that the officer was, you know, if he was engaged, was directly engaged with one person because there was a fight between two females who seemed to be focused on each other. So even if the young man did attack the officer, and I'm not saying he did, it seems like the officer may have been in a one-on-one -on -one situation, which makes me wonder why he would deploy a taser in a one-on-one -on -one situation. We'll move on now. And we'll end right here with force. It says the amount of active power, strength, or energy that is reasonable to overcome an actor's physical resistance. So once again, I wasn't there. Both sides are saying they have the trump card of a video, but neither side has released those videos yet, so we'll have to wait and see. But my thoughts and prayers do go out to the young man in Bastrop. Now stay tuned because after this, we'll have Darren McBreen and also InfoWars writer Kit Daniels discussing what happened with the excessive force when they went to Dallas, Texas, and they encountered the Sheriff's Department there. We're on the march, the Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. And welcome back. If you've been watching InfoWars.com over this past weekend, you saw the videos of the Dallas Sheriff's Department assaulting peaceful demonstrators. It was a very horrific event. Uh, they assaulted people, as you saw earlier in the piece. They were punching people, shoving people into objects and so forth. And to talk about that more in depth, we have two of our best and brightest. Kit Daniels, InfoWars.com reporter, and also Darren McBreen of the InfoWars Nightly News. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. I'm glad Thank to be you. here. All right, so tell me what happened. Everybody's seen the things that went on before. You know, they're digging up the X where JFK was shot, a whole bunch of other shenanigans going on. But tell us specifically, let's start with you, Kit. What happened when you guys were at the barricades and you encountered the Dallas Sheriff's Department? Well, this is another, uh, another example of the emergent police state in which the police not only deny our birthrights, 
but they also physically assault us for exercising them. We were directed by the Dallas police to the area where we were going to wait to enter Daly Plaza, which beforehand the city of Dallas and I believe it was the Coalition of Political Assassinations agreed that 2.30 p.m. would be the time where there would be open public access to the plaza after the event. Mm -hmm. And by the time we, we uh, entered, we were entered the area outside the event center. We never, at no point did we breach any sort of barricades or anything. At, <clears throat> by the time we even got there, the event had already been over. There was, the Ely Plaza was. It was pretty much cleared out at yeah, that Yeah, it was completely empty, just about empty. And so right when we got our, right when our demonstration got there, we uh, were intercepted by four bicycle cops who stopped us from going further. So we waited and we were basically, we were just peacefully assembled, just as the First Amendment recognizes that we can do. Right. And at no point was, there was no attempt or anything of the sort to breach any sort of barricades whatsoever. We were standing there and we were just speaking freely. Right. And eventually, a single line file of Dallas County Sheriff's deputies came from behind and marched up front without speaking a word. And once, and they came in from behind the police officers that were already there. And all of a sudden, without any warning or anything that they said, they breached the, they opened their own, their own barricades and they moved in on us. Uh, that's when, yeah, that's, that's when all bedlam broke loose. Now, Darren McBreen, you were also there. Tell us what happened when you actually encountered the sheriffs or when they encountered you. Well, you know, that's the thing is a lot of the YouTube videos start out with the, the violent push and everything. But uh, I would um, ask people to maybe look a, a few minutes earlier because it was very peaceful. Uh, other than Alex saying no more lies and things like that, it was very peaceful. You see smiles on the police officers. You know, they're saying, hey, this is a barricade. We're going to let you in pretty soon. Mm -hmm. But right now, let's, let's just, you know, you got to wait here. In a couple minutes, we'll let you in. Then we see over two dozen of these, the, the police officers dressed in black. That's the when they came in. The, and that, those, that was the sheriff's department. They just suddenly, just all of a sudden, bam. And just very violently. Shoving. We, we've yep. seen the footage. Uh, there's very famous footage of Alex being uh, right there. The cops are grabbing his his collar, shoving him back. Also, Rob Jacobson, one of our camera guys, one of our editors, was there as well. Josh got shoved. I got shoved. Um, they would stop for a second, then they would continue to do so, and they kind of corralled us in a corner. And a lot of people, you know, we were we were more than upset of of being manhandled. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was part of it. But I think the real anger and the real disgust was the fact that here we are there to peaceably assemble right. and demonstrate. Okay, that's right in the Constitution. So we were we felt that we were violated big time. Oh, you definitely were. You didn't yeah. have to feel violated because you can yeah. see the footage right there on your screen. And Absolutely. Uh, it's very, uh, very unfortunate how the sheriffs decided to uh, display themselves that day. They're not only pushing grown men who are you know, peaceful to begin with, but also children. We've seen things. Kit Daniels, uh, what did you see on the scene? Well, I interviewed one gentleman who pointed out something that I noticed at the time, and he said that that the police there, they were pushing and shoving people indiscriminately. It didn't matter who you were. If you were within that radius of that area, you're going to get pushed and shoved. Mm -hmm. And what really startled me the most was the fact that they pushed us at least one city block away. Right. And the, uh, <clears throat> there was a, I think it was the Old Red Museum between De La Plaza and the JFK Memorial Plaza. They pushed us past that into the Memorial Plaza. And, <clears throat> and then a, the next day, the Dallas News came, um, printed us, a statement from the spokesperson for the Dallas County Sheriff that said that we, uh, the reason we were forcibly moved was because we refused to obey. But at no point whatsoever were we warned or asked to leave the premises. And look, we're alive for hours, so mm -hmm. that's apparent. So you could trace our steps the entire way. Exactly. And, it, you know, the proof is right there in the video. And we weren't being violent. We weren't, you know, it was just... Plain and simple, the right to peacefully assemble and, and demonstrate. That's what we were doing. And we followed directions. The cops said, you can't go beyond this point. And we said, fine, we'll stay here until you let us in.
And it's a, it's a very unfortunate thing. Like I said, you were peacefully there. Everybody can go to the archives of PrisonPlanet.tv, YouTube, InfoWars.com, and trace your steps, just like you said. Now, tell me what happened after this. So, you know, most of the hubbub is over. The police have pretty much ceased shoving you guys around. What happened at that point? Well, what happened afterwards is this whole operation, you know, this whole protest, I believe, is going to backfire on the mainstream media, on the establishment completely, because a lot of people who weren't necessarily, they don't have an opinion on John F. Kennedy, whether he was assassinated by a lone gunman or, or several people, if it was a conspiracy or not, they are wondering why the barricades, why we were being censored. And, and so I think in the, in the long run, it's just waking people up in the process. It's already backfired. Uh I've seen the articles from the local media affiliates that spoke about the rally, and they kind of spun it into favor with the Dallas County uh, Sheriff's, Sheriff's Department. Office. And everybody recognizes yeah. the spin. And 99, you know? I would say 95 well, to 99% of the comments sections are saying, hey, you all are lying. This is what really happened. Yep. This is why we have seen time and time again where media, mainstream media outlets have been moving to close down comment sections because they don't want the truth coming out. They, want, they don't want people to question their official story. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got an email that later that evening of the attack where a gentleman told me he emailed a, a local affiliate and saying, hey, why didn't you cover this? This was police brutality. And the response he got was, this is, this, I did not see no brutality whatsoever. And uh, all I saw was people trying to enter a restricted area in which they needed a ticket. No, and that's that's not that's what happened. Exactly, that is not that's not what happened. What happened. So no, the more things, I'm sorry, Jack. I was going to say the more things change, the more they stay the same. Because 50 years ago, they spun the entire assassination, and if anything, the media is just continuing to go down that slope. Yeah, the the spin doctors <laughs> are still at work. I remember the day of the the day of the rally, you guys were out there, and one of the big networks is on TV calling James Tag, one of the survivors, the guy who actually got hit by a ricochet. Yep. And they're calling him a conspiracy theorist, a guy who was there who got shot by a ricochet. And he was the keynote speaker during the 40th anniversary of the JFK assassination. Definitely a historical person in American history. By all means, he should have been there. Exactly. It's well, very interesting that this all happened with the backdrop of the anniversary of the JFK assassination, even though that's not why we were there. We were there because of the censorship the city of Dallas was uh, promoting for the event. And it's funny that 50 years after what some say was the real start of the military industrial complex that Eisenhower warned us about before, several years before Kennedy was, came into office, mm -hmm. we see this. We see the emergence of bureaucracy in the police state. You're right, Kit. This is a police state, and this is what the police state looks like. Kit Daniels, Darren McBreen, thank you for your time, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. you. Now, if you'd like to know more about the Kennedy assassination, you can stop by the InfoWars shop and take a look at these titles. We have Hit List by Richard Belzer, They Killed Our President by Jesse Ventura, and Who Really Killed Kennedy by Dr. Jerome Corsi. And if you're an extreme history buff, if you're one of those people who say, I want to know as much history as possible, you know, one of those wicked thought criminals, you can pick up the JFK assassination book special. You can see it on a special price for a special time. It is regularly $77.85. You can get it right now for $54.95. You can get that at the InfoWars store. Well, I'm Jakari Jackson for the InfoWars Nightly News, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show.